church, <laughs> and I want a dialogue. This is a conversation. So we're already ahead on that point. This first set is divided or shared by Roland Hayes and Paul Robeson. Now, Paul's father was a preacher, and so he ran as far away from that as possible. I sympathize. <laughs> sympathize. Um, <laughs> And yet, I find myself giving concerts in churches so much. Some of you, I didn't get too far into it, after all. And Roland, uh, his mother, dearly wanted him to be a preacher. So he was like, I'll be a concert singer. Okay, Roland, all right. Um, because the spiritual is seminal and central to the black experience, I've included it, but also I include it because it is the oldest form of American music. Yes, it is formed out of African blood and American soil, but we are here now, and so the spiritual is all of our tradition. I also wanted to show, by putting spirituals right up against Schubert and Verdi, that divisions in genre are as silly as divisions between people. We are here one day after the day that Michael Brown was killed by Ferguson police. And as this is a church service, not only do we gather to remember victory, but we also gather to commemorate the memory of those taken away from us too soon. In that vein, this next song that we do is even more poignant for me because um, Paul would sing this one when he would go to what was then called the Soviet Union. He was extremely popular in countries like the Soviet Union and Wales and others because he insisted on singing to people in their own language. He was a massive Renaissance man. He was a polyglot. He had a gift for languages. And they loved him in the Soviet Union for singing to him in Russian. And the chorus of this song is translated as, oh, well, in Russian it's, Oh, yes, it's tak bura. And translated, it roughly means, oh, would that life could be this beautiful forever. Mm -hmm. And when I think of those that are taken from us too soon, out of violence and bigotry, I think to myself, my God, I would love to be able to hold on to the beautiful moments when all these people were still alive. Mm -hmm.
come to two Schubert songs. Now, Schubert was at the very beginning of Mark and my friend relationship. Uh, we got together and sat read way too many Schubert songs at one, at one sitting. Um, and then we came back the next day and did some more Schubert. Um, so you could say this is a specialty of ours, but also it was a specialty of Roland Hayes. Um, despite many people wanting him to sing various Otello, him having a light, high tenor voice, not at all dramatic, not at all suited for Verdi's opera, the only reason they wanted him to sing it was because he was brown. He knew what he was good at. He was good at spiritus. He was good at French melody. And he was good at Schubert. He sang German leader so beautifully that he was in great demand in Germany for it. And on one of his trips, uh, there was some racial unrest. Uh, some white folk didn't want to sit next to the black people in the audience. And so they started late, and there was some commotion. And uh, Roland came out on stage and sang the first few lines of Du bist die Ruhe, which literally translates as, you are peace. And the story goes that the crowd was still. Uh, we are very grateful that you all are not rioting right now. <laughs> I appreciate it. I don't know about Mark. Um, but yeah. But we're going to do Du bist die Ruhe and Nachs und Träume, Night and Dreams right straight through without taking a break. And I'll tell you a little bit, about, a little bit more about the Schubert after we do these two songs back to back.
But what you need to know about spirituals, and this is something that I learned um, not only at the feet of my father, the minister, but at the feet of my parents, folklorists and anthropologists, and a fancy $25 word uh, that's ethnomusicologists, which of course means musicologists who study the musical folk traditions. So they took me all across the lower 48. Um, around 11 to age 11 to age 14 to these little one room black churches, one room schoolhouse style buildings with a really, 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 really loud uh, rattling water fountain in one corner. <laughs> it was like, it was like, it was like, yeah, it was, it was a cube that just kind of rose out of a car and no instruments, usually no indoor bathroom. And everybody knew the melodies and a few elders knew the words. And they just made incredible music with these spirituals. And what I learned going with them to all these churches is that Jesus and spirituals is not the Christian high church idea that we've been taught. Jesus in spirituals doesn't even adhere to any of the historical things we know about a man who might, have, might or might have not been Jesus. Jesus and spirituals represents peace, freedom, hope. In fact, the hope for something better. Because if you think about it, the slaves did not have any concept of a Middle Eastern carpenter. <laughs> they just knew that he was a symbol for something better than the life that they had been forced into. So when I sing about Jesus and spirituals, think of it as freedom, as hope, as peace, something truly ecumenical and for all. Steal away, steal away, steal away. Green trees abandoned 
sinner stands a trembling. The trumpet sounds with the air must fall. I ain't got long to stay here. Oh, steal away, steal away, steal away. based on their physical appearance. 
we would all be richer for it. So this is tomorrow is winter, uh, summertime, gentle lady, and strange fruit. And we're just going to go through without a break. You can express yourselves however you want, but we're going to stay in the groove for this particular set. <laughs>
And so he won, and then they found out that he was black. So, <laughs> And because of that, they decided that they weren't ready for him to get the usual prize that was given to the winner, which is usually a sum of money and a debut on the Met Opera stage. So they had to wait, I think a couple of years later, Marian Anderson was the first. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, in an unusual uh, instance in American history of uh, people being more comfortable with a woman going first, <laughs> and then, I really wish we could keep that role going somehow, but uh, I don't know. Um, but, so they sent him off to Europe to make, his, to make his career. And he did, they loved him there, especially in Italy, because he sang very beautifully. And then later when he came back to the States and settled in California, he became the singing voice for Sidney Poitier and the first movie version of Four Game Dance. Mm -hmm. So there's another connection to earlier on the program. And, um, and one note about that song from Borgie and Bess, Summertime. We put it in the dark section, even though it is the only song in the dark section in a major key. <laughs> and it is the only one usually that people already know. And people, uh, you know, we've done this program a few times over the last four years. And that is the one in that section that everybody goes, oh yeah, I know this, I know this, this is cool. But the reason I put it in the dark section is because the lyrics are pretty offensive. <laughs> Forget the whole sexism of your, your daddy's rich and your mama's good looking, but also, I don't sing daddy and mammy. Because mammy was the name they gave the black women that they forced to raise the slaves' children. Mm -hmm. I sing daddy and mommy because I like this song, but I don't like that word in that context. Um, they talk about the cotton being high. I don't really think I need to explain that. That is why that song is in the dark part of the program. But when we come into the light section, the section we're in now, we get one of the arias that McFerrin Sr. made his own um, from La Traviata, and it is a father's scheming attempt to welcome home a prodigal son. And, you know, I love, I love singing in Italian, because everything sounds cooler, <laughs> um, even the conniving bits. And I say in the recipe before this ar aria starts, um, Oh, my son, oh, filio mio. Oh, you know, how much you suffer, how much you cry, oh, soffri, oh, pianto. Tergere, you pianto, dry your tears. Ritorno di tua padre, return to your father. And then I say, pride is vain. But of course, in Italian, it is, orgoglio. Allora, disquale. 
to get the reward of my son coming back and I don't want to tell him that I've ruined your life. <laughs> mm. Mm. So there is, a, there is an immediate connection in the style of vocalism and the passion that is in especially Italian opera, but grand opera in general, and the spiritual and gospel tradition. Mm. You cannot sing any of those genres without full body participation. Mm. Otherwise it just isn't right. And so a lot of black singers sing opera beautifully, but you don't see so many of them on stage in the studio. It ain't because they can't hack it. <laughs> it definitely wasn't the case that Senior couldn't hack it. He was amazing. Um, and there are some recordings of him on YouTube, and you should definitely go and find him. The voice is out of this world. Um, and his voice was the first voice that I heard singing this next spiritual, Oh Glory, which became the title of this program. And I heard it, and then I ran over to Mark's house, and I was like, you need to listen to this. <laughs> it's amazing. And you know, we were like, it's, you know, that yes, a voice that is a gift, but also that he invested so much care in, that clearly had so much immaculate technique behind it. And this spiritual, in particular, was just always going to be the title of this program. One reason is because, again, we get this theme of hoping for something better in the words. The chorus, it's my favorite line, says, there is room enough in paradise to have a home in glory. Now, in this time of rising exorbitant wealth in a certain percentage of, of the population and skyrocketing poverty, in another part of the population, in this time of rising housing costs. I live in New York, mm -hmm. it's expensive. I used to live in Boston, it's expensive. I just got back from a, a tour to LA and San Francisco, it's expensive there. It's expensive everywhere. In this day and age with all of that stuff going on, the idea that there is a place where one can have not a mansion or a studio apartment, but enough, a home. That is an ideal worth hoping for 
for the future and fighting for now.
that began to be sung a lot in the period of time that we like to call the Civil Rights Era. But I like to think of it as the beginning of an era that is still going on today because we are still fighting for everyone's rights. Oh, freedom, oh, freedom, oh, freedom over me, and before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave to go To go home to my Lord. 